so let me let me guess you know why you are here in the RSA conference and then what you might be looking for so you may be uh, looking for some solution and so based on the 451 uh, enterprise survey result the usual behavior is the most biggest concern that enterprise have and you can also see for example fishing like 19 percent of the enterprise said that's my biggest concern so if you combine only these two, like more than half of the enterprise is really concerned about end user, like you and me. And we constantly trying to improve, like training, training the end user. And then whatever we try, we feel very little improvement uh, from the end, end users, end user security. So this is based on enterprise survey result. And the end user, the user behavior is the biggest concern that enterprise have. And the phishing show like 20%. And then these are the, the biggest concern most of the enterprise have. So, you know, your, your company or your client, they have all these, you know, biggest concern. So how can we stop the malware getting to the end user? Like you or me or your, the, the, your employee in your, your company. We constantly trying to, but the malware, is constantly trying this evasion tactics and techniques such as obfuscation and junk code, etc. These evasion tactics and then tools are widespread. And one of the reasons why this is widespread is that the easiness and inexpensiveness of these evasion tactics and then tools. And this table, for example, shows that the cost, uh, you know, the tools that you can buy from the dark market uh, most of them is like free or it's almost free. It's very cheap to get it. So we constantly looking to defend against this evasion tactic. And then like many of the vendor here, they will claim that they are very effective to this evasion tactic. But you know, who is supposed to prove that? So let's say somehow magically, you're walking around this RSA conference and then you found this amazing, this brilliant, effective, AI base, this security solution. And then you, let's say you email to your security team, or maybe you are the security officer, and then you try to deploy this new security solution. And then you ask IT team to deploy it. And the first reaction that you will get from them is not about, wow, so cool, exciting technology. No. The first reaction they will give you is, Oh, sorry, we have no resource at this moment. So we don't have time for this new security solution. So whether you're replacing it or adding to existing security solution, it should not like, require monitoring alert and like, further investigation. It should work just by default. So let me introduce the technology that it meet all these requirements that I've been emphasizing. Uh, it should be bulletproof against evasion technology. It should work just by default. It should work by default without requiring further investigation. And it is called data sanitization. And uh, industry is also called CDR. So you can use you know, both terminology. So let me explain what CDR, data sanitization, is. So I'm going to use an like, analogy of the water. So let's say there is a cup of water on the table. And you don't know if it's safe to drink or you don't know where it comes from. So how about we like just boil uh, for a few minutes. And at the end, so all the bacteria will be killed and then you can drink the water kind of safely, right? So in this first one, this is, you can think of as uh, the file with like unknown threat. You don't know the source of it. And then the step second, we call data sanitization process. And then finally, on the third, you get this clean file without threat. So that's what kind of data sanitization is. So let me give you a little bit more context. So how this data sanitization works. So basically this process eliminate programmable, like scripting, those components such as macro, VBScript uh, from this you know, file. So we eliminate this threat without even trying to detect if certain content is malicious or not. So let me go into a little bit more details to give you more technical definition. So the first of all, 
it removes the potentially malicious code, regardless if it's malicious or not. Second, there is even more. It, it potentially also removes the, old, removes the older component if it's not approved by the security policy that you have. For example, it removes like metadata of the image before this image file is shared with outside so that like GPS location embedded in the image file is not shared with ex extra outside. The third, it also check if the file conforms the structure with the standard, such as RFC or vendor specific file format. Finally, the fourth one, which is not what it is not. So it's not malware analysis. It's trying not to detect if the file is malicious or not. So I think you have a lot better understanding now, but let me give you some example of using the Microsoft Office Word document. So in my mind, the Microsoft Word document looks like this. So there is text, there is a lot of images, it may have a macro, it may have certain object, maybe it's unknown, and it may have other components such as like metadata, etc. So by applying the data sanitization, on the right side, you see like original file. And then on the left side, you see actually the clean file that is sanitized. So during this process, important text, image, visible information is going to be carried over to the new file, and which is new constructed, and is to be uh, clean. So what you also notice here is that image or the link, those files will be modified so that some of the malicious content within the image or the link will be removed. So I think you probably have a lot better understanding of the data sanitization or CDR by now. But maybe when so you go back, so how are you going to apply it? So will your client or your boss would like the idea of modifying the file? So let me give you some example scenario using the email processing to see how it works. So from the internet, somebody sent the unknown email, but we don't know if this is malicious or not. Again, we are not trying to detect if the file is you know, malicious or not. But using the data sanitization, CDR process, the clean file is getting to the end user. So the end user will get just a clean file. If they want original file, they can still access the original file from the, the area where it's, it's originally kept. So here's the key point is that just by default, you know, there is no end user. There is nothing to investigate. So there is no IT team who need to keep continuously every day looking for the alert to see this is a legitimate alert or not. So end user still get this file, but it's already known to be good. So so you can see, for example, inbound email, that's you can think of as the cup of the water on the table, which we don't know the safety of. And then the middle, you can cons consider as a boiling the water. And then finally, there's a safe, clean water that you can drink it. So that's about the data sanitization. And thank you for listening.